Just hit 648. We are following breaking news in Minnesota this morning. It's happening in the Twin City suburb of Brooklyn Park. Police there say that the body of a missing three-year-old girl has been pulled from an apartment complex swimming pool. It was found in murky water at the bottom of the pool early this morning. Now, officers say that the girl was reported missing around 8 last night. Her parents, who do not live at the complex where she was found, told police that she had been playing with other kids when she disappeared. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. It's now 12 minutes before 7. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. We're starting nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. Also breaking this morning, the Archbishop of St. Paul in Minneapolis has resigned amid sex abuse cover-up charges against the Archdiocese. Archbishop John Needstead said in a letter posted this morning that his resignation was accepted by Pope Francis this morning. He said that he hopes the move will give the Archdiocese a new beginning amidst the many challenges it faces. Now, the auxiliary bishop of the archdiocese also submitted his resignation, and Pope Francis has appointed Reverend Bernard Hebda as the apostolic administrator. Hebda will serve as the leader of the archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis until the appointment of a new archbishop. Police say there could be more details released later today about a deadly shooting in northern Minnesota. A former employee at me Rancho restaurant in Bemidji was killed after witnesses say he forced his way in as they were getting ready to open for the day and started arguing. The fight ended when he was shot and killed. Another person is in custody, but there's no word so far if charges will be filed. Police are trying to contact the victim's family in Mexico before releasing any names. Two people were hurt in separate rollover crashes in Becker and Ottertail counties overnight. The first was just before 10 last night on Highway 113 near White Earth in Becker County. The state patrol says 41-year-old Angela Holt of Monoman was hurt when her car left the road and rolled. Her injuries are considered non-life-threatening. The other crash happened about 30 minutes later on Highway 32 near Perham in Ottertail County. In that crash, police say that 25-year-old Gage Barnes of Vergas rolled his car while he was trying to pass another vehicle. His injuries are also not considered life-threatening. A Thief River Falls, Minnesota man was hurt this weekend when his pickup was hit by a train. 72-year-old Richard Jordy was crossing tracks on Highway 59 in Marshall County when it was hit on the passenger side by that train. He suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Coming up on 651, time for weather and traffic on the ones, and we start by checking in with Mick on this Monday morning. All right, thanks, and we start under a mostly clear sky. That'll be replaced by some clouds up in the northern half of the region by noon, and that's the arrival of some cooler air. Although hopefully we'll hit 70 in the southern end of the valley, certainly cooler, less humid than yesterday afternoon it look at the uh, four o'clock in the afternoon Roseau and Bedette 59 Thief River 61 Grand Forks Devils Lake 64 70 in the southern parts of the lakes area of Minnesota northern parts of the lakes area closer to 60 to 65 ouch so for the afternoon we're going to call it mostly to partly sunny, cooler than yesterday for sure 74 in the southeast corner of North Dakota northeast corner of South Dakota Closer or less than 70 the further north you go. And that's the same story for the lakes area of Minnesota. Get up into northwest corner of Minnesota. Partly sunny, real cool, but dry. With 62 Bedette and Roseau and about the same for Halleck. Cavalier, Langdon, Candu, low to mid. 60s up north and breezy. So not only am I encouraging some long sleeves, probably also... Maybe a little light jacket up north. Well, the uh, rain and thunderstorms down there in the Sioux Falls area, tracking across the Minnesota-Iowa border. And again, we start mostly uh, clear up north. The air calm, but the wind is out of the north where it is blowing under 10 miles an hour. That's going to pick up to about 15 to 20, 20 plus here later today. And we're showing some of the uh, cooler air starting to move into Grand Forks at 48. A light west breeze at 7 and Fargo-Moorhead north wind at 8. Got the double nickels out there. And a traffic update now from Al Ahmed. Good morning, Mick. Good morning, everyone. Traffic out here on Interstate 94. Steady to brisk. And the uh, closer you get to uh, 
the tri-state, the, the uh, tri-level rather, the heavier the traffic gets. Interstate uh, 94 westbound traffic is uh, heaviest right now. Uh, northbound I-29 is as well. Reminder for you, we have construction work going on on northbound I-29, actually north and southbound I-29, and it uh, starts down around the Davenport area, extends northward for about five miles, so make sure you're planning for that. That's going to be with us through September, and it's ultimately going to get into the metro area as well. On I-94 in Fargo, Alamut Valley today traffic. It's now seven minutes before seven. Charges are expected this week against nine people arrested in a first-of-its-kind operation in Baxter, Minnesota. An undercover police officer posted an online ad on Backpage.com advertising the services of a 22-year-old woman. The Baxter Police Department says on May 20th, nine men ranging in age from 27 to 71 were arrested for soliciting prostitution using that fake ad. Two of them remain in custody. The other seven were released, but will likely be facing charges. More than 600 men and women from the Moorhead-based 136 Infantry are at Camp Ripley, preparing for a prestigious assignment. The Fergus Falls Daily Journal is reporting the Guard members have been selected to take a rotation at the National Training Center next year in California, which will involve realistic war games. The 136 has Guard members from Detroit Lakes, Fergus Falls, Wadena, Grand Rapids, Crookston, and Thief River Falls. Minneapolis has joined a growing list of Minnesota cities now allowing takeout sales of beer and growlers. While liquor stores still have to be closed on Sundays, breweries and brew pubs can sell jugs on Sunday. The state legislature passed the new law in May. It's the first time you can buy beer and take it home on a Sunday since before prohibition. 6.54 now in our consumer alert this morning. Parents will notice this when they add their teen driver to their insurance policy. It's going to go up a lot. A new report from insurancequotes.com finds that the average married couple will pay 80% more for car insurance when they add their teen. 16-year-olds caused the highest spike in premiums, about 96%, while the average impact decreases to 60% for 19-year-olds. There are things like good student discounts that can relieve some of the sting, so be sure to talk to your insurance agent. You also may want to brace yourself for a little higher electric bill this summer to keep your house cool. The U.S. Energy Information Administration expects the typical U.S. residential electricity bill to go up 4.8 percent. Here are some ways to save on your bill without sacrificing comfort. Keep the shades drawn during the heat of the day and use the microwave or gas grill to cook instead of the oven. Running a ceiling fan or box fan will allow you to raise the thermostat or even do without AC on milder days. And if you have a programmable thermostat, take advantage of it so you're not fully cooling the house when you're not home. In this morning's Healthier Me, there's been a push to go green in more than just what we drive. Eating clean and avoiding processed foods is on the forefront of today's conversations about health. Now, experts say that this is because people are becoming more aware of what is in their dinner. You often see things on labels, in restaurants, and on TV, and more products have been going natural. I don't think that healthy food has really gotten cheaper, but I think people are willing to pay more for the price of bad health later on. Farmers markets are in season. To find one closest to you, we've attached a link at valleynewslive.com. Just click on the hot button. Unwelcome guests are also in season. <laughs> Hanging around as we head to those farmer markets or maybe cook up some corn on the cob out on the grill. Of course, we're talking about the pesky, buzzy friends, the mosquitoes. The Valley Today's Christy Larson joins us live from Cass County Vector Control with more on what they are doing to keep these annoying bugs away. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Kyle and Lisa. I know a lot of people probably felt them this weekend. The wind did help keep them away, but Vector Control does have plans to get rid of more of them. We have Ben Prather here with us this morning, and you guys are actually out and about this morning already. Yeah, I just uh, spoke with the pilot a few moments ago, and he is up, uh, you know, pre-flight kind of inspection of the area. Uh, so he will be making some passes, uh, particularly in North Fargo and uh, North Moorhead was an area that he was interested in looking at, uh, maybe areas that we're getting into after dark tonight. So uh, we're not applying an insecticide right now. 
Uh, we're just going out looking for obstructions, but uh, the aerial application is scheduled to begin uh, sometime around 8 o'clock this evening uh, for the cities of West Fargo, Fargo, and Moorhead. So uh, we're hoping for some relief out there. We know people have been, uh, you know, pretty upset with how conditions have been, but uh, certainly the weather has, has been a major problem for us and uh, has overwhelmed what we've been able to accomplish. But uh, hopefully tonight we have our fingers crossed for a good application and things will uh, turn around. And I know, too, if people are going to be out tonight barbecuing or maybe going camping this, you know, f uh, later this weekend, what are some of the things they want in that bug spray quickly? Uh, you know, absolutely something that contains DEET is going to be uh, your number one go-to. If you don't like DEET, uh, oil of lemon eucalyptus is another great one that is recommended by the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, certainly there are products that you can apply to your clothing that you can wear, apply to your gear that are going to help keep flies, mosquitoes, other insects away from you as well. So uh, stop by your sporting goods store or your hardware store and look for uh, any of those products or visit the CDC website or the Cass County Vector Control website. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. And I know, like they said, it's going to hopefully begin for that aerial spray at 8 o'clock tonight, weather permitting. And we do hear the plane buzzing, checking things out around here in South Fargo over our uh, VNL studios. It's a welcome sign. I know it might wake you up a little early this morning, but it's like, you know, relief is on the way when you hear that plane flying over. Christy Larson reporting live vector control for us this morning. Hopefully some vector control action weather permitting going on tonight, but it sounds good for those mosquito spraying applications. An afternoon on the water doubled as a fundraiser for a kindred man who's been down on his luck. More than $1,200 was raised for 85-year-old Clem Cassette during a fishing tournament at Swanee's Resort near Lake Park yesterday. Clem lost his home to a tornado in September on his 85th birthday. Then just before Christmas, disaster struck again when a fire destroyed his well house, leaving him without running water. If you'd like to help, you can still help out by dropping off donations at Bank of the West, and a GoFundMe page is also available online. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Here's our question. 25% of men do this at least once a week. The answer, wash their car. Something that I am planning to do today. So I guess this will be my once a week. All right, don't make it rain by no. washing your car. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how it works. That is true. And don't leave the top down on your sports car. <laughs> Yeah. Don't have one of those. <laughs> All right. Hey, our weather today, starting on the uh, sunny side, cool, uh, hardly a breeze. We'll pick the wind up this afternoon, and we'll be in the upper 60s, maybe a 70. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. More local news and weather for you right here in just 25 minutes. Have a great Monday, everybody. We will see you tomorrow morning.